Arab Tov Khafrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Friends, what an unbelievable thing happening. Yesterday, we reported to you here on Israeli News Live that it was Turkish-backed militants that were involved in the attack against the Russian air base and, of course, the naval facility there in Tardis. And that, of course, from a good friend of ours there on the ground in Syria that shared that information. I reached out to him. He shared the information with me that it was a Turkish-backed militant group there that had actually Turkish-supplied military group, everything that had, as he put it, nearly 100% certain was the ones that actually launched the attack against the Russian forces. Now that has been corroborated as we reported that yesterday, been article after article already coming out today corroborating that information. Well, now I know even more about what went on. And what it was, was the United States and Turkey together are testing the resolve of the Russian military to see whether or not or how they would respond to a massive invasion of the Syrian airspace. Now that may seem crazy to say it, but they were using 13 drones. These drones are being tracked, sophisticated. According to President Putin, there was no way for this to be carried out, the technical uh, things that they had discovered, without collusion with U.S. and Turkish forces there. Now, going to share something with you. We reported this, as you can see on the screen and behind you there. This is from September the 7th. 2016, we reported Erdogan betrays Putin with stage coup to invade Syria. All right, you remember that. We did this. We've gone over this many times that the coup that happened in, in Turkey back in 2016 was staged from the very beginning. It was never, never intended to be a real coup to overthrow President Erdogan. But instead, it was a staged coup to build Russia's trust with Turkey to allow Turkish military tanks, as we had reported in that report, that were moving into Syria, into the northern province of Syria. We had constantly reported about what was going on there, showing continually all the things that were happening. Uh, but more importantly, those tanks, the military equipment and stuff that was being moved into the country, uh, at that time, to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad. Now, our initial uh, look at this was that Turkey would be coming into Damascus from the north. The United States already had taken, had been working with the Free Syrian Army, ISIS, etc. In the south, they'd crossed into Al-Tant. We, we exposed the secret base that was there. And you know, friends, this is not just about, uh, you know, what the United States is doing bad before even the United States had gone in there. When Russia never admitted that Russia had boots on the ground, we were covering here on Israeli News Live that there were Russian military forces on the ground and that this would end up leading to a conflict between NATO and Russia. In fact, we found out in 2015 that one of the main Russian news sources in Russia actually reported Israeli journalist Stephen Benoon has confirmed their Russian boots on the ground. See, we've been exposing every move of what's been going on in Syria the best we can. And that's what we're seeing now that is happening with this latest move here because of having good friends there in Syria. And we're talking about Syrian Christians that love the Lord Jesus, letting us know what's happening, that Russia came under attack from a Turkish-backed uh, Turkish backed jihadist group there near these bases. Now, the Duran says drone attack on Russian bases launched from Turkish controlled area. This is only confirming what we'd already said to you. You have also the Business Insider. Russia is blaming Turkey for attacks on its military bases in Syria after hinting the U.S. was responsible. Now, they're trying to show on the Business Insider that Russia is shifting blame, but it's actually they, working, they were working together. And it wasn't so much that the United States uh, was involved in, in lobbying over these, these, uh, uh, these, these small mortar shells over at the air base. This was all a test to see whether or not and how Russia would respond to an all-out invasion. That's why there were 13 drones used in this, uh, this ambush here on the Russian bases in Hamim as well as in uh, uh, 
uh, also in, in, in Tartus. All right. Who is attacking Russia's bases in Syria? A new mystery emerges in the war, according to the Washington Post. Let me share with you what the Washington Post says, which also kind of confirms what I'm telling you now. A series of mysterious attacks against the main Russian military base in Syria, including one conducted by a swarm of armed miniature drones, has exposed Russia's continued vulnerability in the country despite recent claims of victory by President Vladimir Putin. President Putin, I'm telling you, you're being tested. You think that Erdogan is your ally. Turkey is not your ally. They were never your ally. They shot down the Russian plane. They've never been your ally. And let me say something too to my American friends. This is not anti-American. This is the United States military deep state that wants to take and have wars in order to keep their economy going, to keep the petrodollar alive. Rather than doing what they should have done before they sent all the jobs under Bill Clinton over to China, all of our manufacturing jobs that employed the American people and give us a decent American economy or sent them over to Mexico. And I'm not against my Mexican brothers or my Chinese brothers and sisters. That's not the point here. The point is, is they could have done their own things to increase their economy. But no, we sent the American uh, uh, manufacturing jobs all overseas and totally destroyed the American economy by doing so. I'm sure too our high wages and standards of living in America also help contribute to that. But nonetheless, we could have worked together and wouldn't have near the deficit we have today had we done the right thing. Now President Trump comes along, and although I don't agree with everything President Trump does, he's tried to make peace with Russia, but the deep state keeps slapping him down. And even this issue with President Bashar al-Assad, at one point, he was trying to stand with Bashar al-Assad and say he can stay in power. But the deep state slaps him down and says, lob in some, uh, lob in some of our, our cruise missiles in there and blow up his bases and stuff and show him who's boss. You know, the thing is, we could have peace with Russia. We could have peace with Syria. But you know what, friends? It was not even Barack Hussein Obama, although he did contribute to a lot of the mess as well. It really wasn't him. It was all the way back under George Bush when he was president of the United States. Yep, doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. It was under his watch when we had General Wesley Clark saying to the world that revealing as a whistleblower a U.S. general, Hello, an American military man his entire life that stands for the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, not one nation under the mighty military, and go and destroy all these other little countries just because you can. Isn't that exactly the way General Wesley Clark brought it out? That one general that exposed it to him that we were going to take down not just Iraq, but five or set was it? Uh, five nations in seven years or seven nations in five years for you, which way it is. Somebody put it in the comment the other day. I wish I'd have remembered it, but I didn't. But you know, we started off with Iraq, country that never attacked America, but we decided to take them out just because we could. You know, I realize Saddam Hussein did a lot of evil things, no doubt about it. He definitely did a lot of evil things against the Kurdish people. And when he invaded Kuwait, I had friends of mine that lived in Kuwait that said there was no greater and more glorious day than when the United States military came in there and liberated Kuwait. But you forget, it was the United States government that put Saddam Hussein in power to begin with. Remember how we blame Russia for getting involved in our elections? Uh, we were involved in Iraq's uh, democratic processes as well. Remember how President Obama goes there to try to stop Netanyahu from getting in? I don't think he went there to try to stop Netanyahu from getting elected. I think he went there to make sure he got elected. After all, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Netanyahu definitely, well, maybe I shouldn't tell you what he really is. Maybe some of you can figure that one out on your own. Just think about the close relationships with the Vatican. Shimon Perez, very similar type of situation. Anyway, my point being is, is that America should be a great nation. 
but because of our leaders in the past, we have lost that status. And now we're willing to go to war with just anybody and everybody. We fund and arm Saudi Arabia with ungodly amount of weapons, and instead of using them for something good, they're over there blowing Yemen back to the Stone Age. Well, people might say, well, Israel, Iran is there too. Okay, listen, this could be done a heck of a lot better than the way we're doing it now. And what about Syria then? President Trump comes into to power, and at first he talks about Assad should be able to stay. But you know, the deep state pulls that chain and snatches him back in place and makes sure he barks us the right way. Oh no, he's got to go and then send over some cruise missiles and blow up his air base to let him know that he's the boss. Every war we're doing, friends, is nothing but about money. It's about trying to keep the petrodollar alive. And then you get someone like President Putin publicly, he finally went to the journalists to tell them what's really going on. Like Russia doesn't know. And I don't say that Russia guy has everything right either. By no means do I. I realize many children have died because of the bombs that they have dropped in Syria. But you know, Russia doesn't want to be there in the first place, and they wouldn't be dropping bombs in Syria if it wasn't for the fact that the deep state has recruited 35 different nationality of soldiers to come in there to try to overthrow one man called Bashar al-Assad. It wasn't a true revolution by the people that disagreed with their president. Which, by the way, we are backing the jihadist. We are backing the worst of the worst of the worst of Muslim soldier fighters. Those that take and put the women in the burqa to where she's totally, totally covered up. Well, I don't have nothing big enough in here to do it. I was going to try to put something all wrapped around my head where you can only see my eyeballs. That's the type of people we're backing. They eat human flesh. Remember that? Some of the fighters that we have backed Eat human hearts. Try to take it out while the guy's still alive so you can see him eating your heart. That's what we're backing. That's the type of jihadism we're backing. Same thing with Israel. Our government, not the people, mind you, the people actually making care packages to send to the poor Syrian families that are destitute because of the war. That's the true Israeli spirit. Not when the government goes over there and says, oh, we're not asking who they are. But we make sure we take care of the al-Nusra and al-Qaeda, another jihadist that hates Israel with a passion. We go patch their soldiers up so they can do what? Go over there and defeat Bashar al-Assad, the government that actually had an equality for Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. Oh, I'm sorry, he's a Shiite, right? That's what it is? I mean, this is unbelievable, friends. So Russia, this is what's going on with you. Now, let me show you something. Turkey, though, is trying to stay one step ahead of the accusations. Ah, yes, this article right here from Al Jazeera. Turkey summons Russia, Iran envoys over Idlib violence. Well, after all, you're in there trying to bomb the jihadist over here. This is supposed to be a no-conflict zone, Syria and Russia. And because the Syrian military is making headway in liberating their own country, I guess the democracy, though, goes completely out the window. I guess, really, President Assad, maybe you're really not the elected leader. After all, according to the way NATO is working this right now, they're basing this all on World War I, pre or post World War I. And, uh, you know, your country was made from the, what, French, French mandate? Is that correct? So it's really, you don't have a choice, President Bashar al Assad. The French and the British and the United States all are the ones that will determine whether or not you're allowed to be president or not. And they're already figuring this out. They're going to re decide your fate. Doesn't the word of God actually say this? Doesn't it say over in Daniel? They divide the lands for gain. That isn't Israel, friends. That's plural. Okay? The Adama, the earth, literally. The Adama, they divide the earth for gain. That money gain. They don't care about humanity. They don't care about the little children. And let me tell you something, little children, I don't care if, it's, if the little child is a Muslim child, a Christian child, or a Jewish child. It's a little child. For heaven's sake, can't we for once stop killing each other? But no. 
And if you say anything against the nation that's out there blowing other people up, you're not American. You're not Israeli. But you totally forget that General Wesley Clark said to us, the United States was going to take down these nations. Libya, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Iran. Iran's already started, hasn't it? Yeah, that protest, doesn't it sound kind of familiar? Just like we reported the other day, the guy that sets himself on fire, like in Tanzania, if I get it wrong, forgive me, I, I'm not good at pronouncing big words and all that kind of good stuff. But that's how the Arab Spring got started, wasn't it? Worked so good, burn them alive. Did you notice how they suppressed our views? Oh yeah, YouTube didn't like it. Don't dare talk about that. Don't expose the fact that you know that you spoke to a Washington representative. They revealed to you that that was true. They don't want that out there. Anyway, though, Turkey summons Russians. It says, why are you doing all this? You're, you're, you're over there causing all these problems over here. So he, he brings their envoys in. It says here, Russian ambassador to Ankara, Alexei uh, Yarkov, and Iranian ambassador Mohammed uh, Ibrahim Taharin Farad were called in to express Turkey's discomfort about the attacks on Idlib. Officials who asked to remain anonymous said on Tuesday, Oh, oh, come on. Yeah, they, they don't want it. They don't need to remain anonymous. They're only doing that so that they can later tell Russia, well, you see, you did this, so we reacted in, in, in accordance to that. You know the only reason Russia doesn't react? I'll tell you why. I have a good friend of mine over at RT, and I'm not going to speak, speak his name here because I didn't ask him if I could say it or not, but I asked him a little while back about this situation with Russia, with Turkey, etc. And he told me, he said, Russia is really playing, balancing a lot of balls in this juggling contest here. And he says, for them to really take on Turkey, it's a, it would be a big war. But he let me know Russia realizes what Turkey is up to. I pray President Putin does realize this. The man's a statesman. He's trying to bring about peace. Even with all the sanctions on his country and everything else. We don't see Russia going out there and trying to gobble up the entire world. And you can't say that back during World War II because they were just trying to defeat the Nazis after they got attacked. No, they didn't relinquish the land after the Soviet Union, no, because you got to remember though, under Russia, when they were a communist nation, that was the Catholic Church who put in their Jesuits to topple the Christian nation when it was under the Tsars. I don't say the Tsars always did the right thing either. By no means, please don't mistake that when I say that. But there was a time where Russia was considered a Christian nation trying to evangelize China and other parts of that part of the world, much like the United States has tried to do the same. But we as an American nation, we have bases all over the world. And if you do your research on how some of the wars have started, like in the case of Vietnam, it was another Roman-inspired war. I, I never knew it. My father served three tour, tour, uh, tours in Vietnam, shot down twice. All right, he was a helicopter mechanic, but he also had to combat and he was a gunner when the helicopter was flying in the combat, and he was shot down twice. But he had no idea either it was a Roman-inspired war. Kind of saying that in a nice way. All right, now let me show you some other things here. President Trump, though, he's trying to do the right thing. I really, the more I watch what he says, he tries to be tough, but at the same time, it's almost like the deep state has a chain on him and he's their dog. You bark when we want you to bark and you don't bark when you do, we don't want you to bark. But from what I'm seeing though, he's trying to defeat the deep state. He's bringing in these different leaders. Supposedly there's been flights going down to Guantanamo Bay, transponders off on the planes, things like that. 
and there's different people that have been arrested, like Hillary Clinton and John McCain, both break their leg at the same time and seem to wear their cast forever for no reason, same leg. And there are those that are saying that they're wearing monitoring bracelets. He's called in the Marine Corps for protection. Now, here's a good example. CBS News puts this out here. President Trump offers optimistic appraisal of talks between North and South Korea, very much like the case with Syria, when he would say, President Bashar al-Assad can stay. The deep state would hear that. Oh, what did he say? Make sure the jihadists get some sarin gas and go bomb the people over there so that Trump can see he's a bad guy. You know, friends, let me tell you something. I used to be in the same shoes you were in. Many of you that are, that are so dogmatic against Syria. Back when the sarin gas attack happened in, uh, what year was that, 20, 2013, I believe it was. I was like, President Obama needs to send the military in there and we need to take the guy out. I used to... Look at my own people in Israel as we never did anything wrong. Whatever military action we need to do, we need to do it. But then the Lord began to deal with my heart about these things. He began to unlock and show me things that were going on. As an investigative journalist, he began to bless me to help me to find those clues that proved otherwise. And one of the first ones was when I saw that President Bashar al-Assad never gassed his own people. When Aaron Erdem came out in defense of this man, a Kurdish, a Kurdish man who was a parliament member in the Turkish government. And believe me, the Turkish are not favorable towards the Syrians. They're favorable towards Israel, yes. They have a good relationship with Israel. And I've always supported the Kurdish people as well. But Aaron Erdem took an investigative report before his parliament in Turkey, caused him to end up in prison because he exposed the Turkish government's involvement in smuggling the sarin gas into Syria to use it by the jihadists, by the Free Syrian Army, by Al-Qaeda, the different groups that were there using that sarin gas and blaming it on Assad to justify a world to come against this man. Seymour Hirsch, another investigative British journalist, also was able to link it with documentation that under Hillary Clinton's watch, they took sarin gas stockpiles from Libya transported it through Turkey into Syria to use against their own people. We have had American peace activists go to Syria investigating both sides, opposition and the Syrian government and the people on the ground to come back and say it is a world of propaganda against the Syrian government. These are the things that get suppressed in mainstream media. So instead, all we get fed in our news in America is Fox News, CNN. And I don't say that everything they say is wrong, but there's definitely an agenda. And my agenda has been one thing, tell you the truth. I have a truth agenda. All right, I want you to hear what President Trump says here, but I promise you, his yeah, chain his chain is going to be cut short again for making this statement. Listen to what he says. Problems with North Korea, a lot of good talks are going on right now, a lot of good energy. I see a lot of good energy. I like it very much what I'm seeing. I just spoke this morning with the, as you know, with the president, President Moon of South Korea. He had some really great meetings. His representatives had a great, great meeting. And I had some very good feedback from that. So hopefully a lot of good things are going to work out. No. All right? That's good. That's positive. I've been watching President Moon. He doesn't want a war. He doesn't want all these military drills in his country against North Korea. He doesn't want this. It's obvious. Watch what the man says and does. But you know what President Trump's against? This right here. U.S. prepares for forcible entry operations in remote theaters of war. This was on December 27th. Massive military drills and preparations have been being made. Why? 
we can't have the petrodollar fall because you got to remember the Illuminati and the deep state are all in this together. And as I said before, I don't believe that the, the leaders of our nation are really the ones in control. Otherwise, why would one Christian nation fight another Christian nation? That doesn't mean that everybody in the nation is Christian, just like Americans. You think we're all Christians in America? I mean, come on, wake up. We're not. We are a diversified country with every belief you can possibly imagine here. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I love about America. It's freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Okay? But the thing is, at the same time, there are some those in control in our government that are... are like our government's like little puppets on a stick, control them what they can say. And this is the way President Trump did with Bashar al-Assad at one point. This is the way he did with President Putin after he talked to President Putin. Great energy. Was really good. Next day, they jerked the chain on the dog. Barked the wrong way, buddy. And President Trump had to change his tune. You know? I don't know what's going on in the background, but it's very troubling. I can see that here. And now they're trying to take the president out completely. Dave Hodges on the Common Sense Show. How the 25th Amendment will be used to remove President Trump on the fake mental illness allegations. You know? Okay, he may have some outlandish ideas on some things. It doesn't mean he's mentally ill. All right? The Russian collusion delusion has collapsed. However, the president has a new challenge that, that will threaten his presidency. President Trump's ins insistence that America has become a hellhole and a swamp needed to be drained has earned him the mental health diagnosis of oppositional defiant disorder. Imagine that. This is the modern day equivalent of the old Soviet diagnosis of political schizophrenia. We're not fighting the Soviet Union anymore, friends. You remember, the Soviet Union was actually ran by Jesuits. Stalin was a Jesuit. And no, I don't glorify Stalin. Although Stalin did work with the United States in World War II to try to help us defeat Japan, and we worked with the Russians to defeat the Germans, and of course, they, they liberated Jewish concentration camps as well as uh, uh, British and American soldier concentration camps as well. God bless the Russian men and women that... Uh, that made that war possible and gave such a great sacrifice. And I say the women as well, because let me tell you something. There were a lot of widows after that war. Was Stalin a great guy? No. He was against the Jews like Hitler was. My father-in-law's father was one of them that he drug off to Siberia, never to see it be seen again. All right? The point is, though, Trump tries to make peace with Russia, but he's snatched away from it. Why? There's too many other people in the world that want a war. And that's what's sad. Doctors also, Yahoo News, want Trump to undergo an emergency mental health evaluation. Here's how that would work. And they go on to explain how. I mean, this is insane, friends. Absolutely insane. And so, you know, when there are people out there that are saying that we're anti-American or we're Russian News Live, you know, no, I get nothing from Russia whatsoever, but I am for truth. Maybe we should change it to Truth News Live. But you know what? The truth hurts, and people don't want to hear the truth. You know, it's like when people say, oh, I can't believe you're Jewish and you're, 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 against, you're against Israel. I'm not against Israel at all, but I am not for the gay parades in Jerusalem nor Tel Aviv. If that's what you stand for and you think that everything that our government does in Israel is okay, then you're going to have to stand with those issues as well and stand by them and say perfectly, Israel does nothing wrong. If you think that we colluding with jihadists that are into cannibalism and that are over there killing the Christian communities in Syria, because why? They're Eastern Orthodox? They're not, they don't go along with the Roman Catholic agenda? If you think that attacking and killing children just because they're Palestinian, that that's the right thing to do? And I realize, friends, I know on the other side too, the Palestinians are being instigated. They're being instigated by Rome. Cardinal Louis... Jean Torrent said there will be no peace in Jerusalem until the status quo of the holy sites is resolved, adequately resolved. What does he mean by adequately? 
Well, he's right. There, there's, nothing, there's nothing resolved, that's for sure. And if anything, fulfilling this third intifada, fulfilling biblical scripture where it says, in the time of their calamity, they took by the power of the sword, and also when their iniquity should have an end, also the power of the sword, using the knives to kill, kill, the, kill the Jewish people. So it's both sides. And I know this. I had a friend of mine in the Israeli military. He was disabled from an accident. He shared with me how that they had target practiced before on live humans. Let me tell you something, friend. The thing is, just like in biblical times, we love our people, we love our country, but when there's evil going on, we have to call out that evil. We, even as Israel, as a Jewish nation, we are waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And the politics is dragging us right into the Roman hands. Well, you know, that had to be that way, though. And I realize that. Why? Because it was Rome that was in control of our land when Yeshua was crucified. And so, therefore, Rome must be in control once again of our land on his return. So I know that's got to happen. But there still needs to be a voice to tell you what's true. There still needs to be a voice that will cry out against sin. We cannot expect to be blessed of God and do the evils that we're doing, whether we're Americans or whether we're Israelis. Remember, and I say it this way too, and same thing with Russia. The reason I bring Russia into this a lot, because why? The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9 speaks about Manasseh, Ephraim, and Judah. Manasseh are the Russians, as Dr. Steve Pigeon pointed out in the broadcast the other day. Ephraim, the British Empire, and all of her colonies around the world, which mainly is the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Ephraimites. Judah, the house of Judah are the ones that are home today. And that doesn't ex exclude my black brothers. I know some people try to say, they, they all the time put out there, Steve, you're too white. You're just a, an Edomite. You know, when you assimilate, when you intermarry, colors change. My great-grandmother was nearly black as most black people are today. She was a Ziegler, which is a Jewish woman. But she had extremely dark skin, very similar to that of the people of India. But I didn't get that color. Because of my father's side, his mother was fair complected. So I got that complexion instead. All right, quit looking at color. God's word is being fulfilled before your eyes and it has nothing to do with your color issues. Ephraim and Manasseh are against one another, devouring one another's arm, according to Isaiah's prophecy in chapter 9, near the end of the verse. And then they both turn on Judah, as the scripture says also that all nations will come against Israel. So Israel is trying to play all these parts, not knowing that everybody's going to come against them eventually. We're not paying attention to the Word of God. We're not paying attention to truth. We're so busy about nationalism, this nation over that nation, or this one's greater than this one or that over there. It's not the case. God said you're devouring one another and your brothers and don't even know it. What has happened to us? What, what have we become? You know, friends, this is what I'm talking about. This is what matters to me. Let's be honest. Let's be truthful. Do you realize the impact, too, that Israeli News Live has all over the world? We've been finding out more and more. And if, if, if this ministry has impacted you in a positive way, let us know about it. And we get hundreds of emails, but put it in the title, you know, impact, or I, you know, I came to know Yeshua. Our friend, we have a good brother in China, and I can't call his name there, but there are many Christians there. They can't watch Israeli News Live, but they watch transcripts. They're reading the, are they reading the transcripts of some of the shows that we've done before, reading them and looking at the prophecy of it, and they're ecstatic about the prophecies affecting people in China. That's why I don't want to see us go to war with China either. You've got Christian brothers and sisters there. 
We, my wife had a beautiful letter from a guy the other day. He was Hindu. And between Israeli News Live and my wife's own interviews that she has done, he said while he was watching the broadcast one day, Yeshua comes to him and he ends up giving his life to Christ. And I may not have this story exactly right, but he came to Christ, he said, because of watching this ministry and my wife's own interviews having that impact upon him as well. A Hindu. And friends, let me tell you something. You're the ones that make that possible. You can, we can glorify the Lord Jesus together because you make that possible too. You know, I used to have to work, and my wife as well, we had to work 40, 50 hours a week. I actually worked longer than that because we owned our own business and everything. So I was working 60, 65 hours a week. And then I could only make a video once every couple of weeks. But one day we just prayed about it and asked the Lord what to do about going full time. And you're the ones that have made it possible for us to be here full time, studying daily, searching, looking, and bringing out this type of information for you. And so your support of this ministry is causing people in China to hear more of the gospel truth, causing this brother that was a Hindu to come to know Jesus Christ as his own Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. You're making that difference because it gives us the ability to focus day and night towards the ministry now. And we thank you for that. And your continued support will make more happen. I want to be able to tell you more testimonies. You know, go right here on the video. You, if you're on Israeli News Live on YouTube, there's a place you can donate there. Or you can do it by mail. We have our address. It appears on the bottom of the screen. I don't even know what it is. Here in America or overseas, if you do it on our, if you look on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, you can contribute there as well. But you make these things possible. And by the way, I'm still, we're looking for some transcribers. After what we heard from China, we're wanting to take only our prophetic messages. The ones where I really break down prophecy here on Israeli News Live, or if you take it from the Institute, either one, we're going to start putting them on our website, getting those uploaded for these people in China. They're hungry for the Word of God. And we thank you for you making these things possible, friends. I, I can't thank you enough. I really can't. And also, I've been having people ask me about an update on Yana. Let me let you know about her medical condition right now. Your love and support has made it possible for her to do these intravenous treatments that she's doing, these 75 grams of vitamin C. People have asked me, send me all kinds of other things that said it'll work and stuff. You have to understand, every type of, I'm just going to say tumor. My wife don't want me to tell you everything. I understand. I have to respect her privacy. But these aggressive treatments have begun to impact this thing that's trying to take her life. And it's taken now a couple of months to really kick in, but now it's beginning to kick in. Every treatment she does is like doing chemotherapy. She's nauseated from it. She doesn't feel good from it, you know. And this thing is dying, and we know, just like when an animal dies, it swells up. That's the good sign. But it's hard. It's hard. But you're the ones that made that possible. The giving of the people, because we don't have insurance here, and if she did conventional medicine, she would not live. I tell you this straight up, she wouldn't live. And we need her. I need her around desperately. And I thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for those of you that have made that possible for her. And we've got a ways to go. We do have a ways to go. But thank you for making that possible. She is doing better. Uh, for a while there, she actually was feeling like everything was okay. But once that tumor began to get that impact of this treatment there, then as it begins to swell and stuff, then she got more sick from it as well, and it, causing migraines as well because of the toxins that are released in the body. So do pray for her. Uh, and, and believe me, uh, you know, even the fact that so many of you have made the comments about the different treatments, I'm posting those as well as I see those in the, in, the, in the comment section, because maybe somebody else out there is sick. So one person wrote, now let me just say this for the person that wrote, you wrote and asked about, are there clinics here in America that treat cancer patients? Yes. Look for a naturopathic doctor in your area. We had one friend that Yana uh, give 
an evaluation for him when he had a tumor in his brain. He only had, he had like, I don't know, six weeks left to live. He came from Prague to America, was treated, and I think it was Oklahoma Clinic there. He is living today as like five years ago when doctors give him only six weeks left to live. She's helped a lot of people herself. Now, she's not a doctor. She's not a doctor. Uh, but she has a lot of not knowledge about naturopathic health. She has studied this extensively. But I just want to tell you thank you. And those that are posting those, I'm putting them out there because somebody else may see it and it might be a benefit to them as well. I've been long talking to you, friends. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for watching. And thank you for being a part of this ministry. I just want to share some of my heart as well as we were closing this out. I'm going to try to get the other part, which was actually part one of the interview with Dr. Pigeon loaded up for tomorrow. I'm going to be traveling we're going up uh, up to Pine Mountain. We've got uh, a friend up there that uh, owns a cabin up there. Uh, in fact, I'm going to post for you guys here before too long as well. And I'll do, when I do a video from up there, I'll post you the website. Uh, we've had some friends that, that have had this place for many years. We've been going there. In fact, it's where I proposed to my wife at uh, that have the cabin up there. And I want to share with you their website. So if you want a little place you can get away uh, just from the hustle and bustle of life, it's a good place to go. And Yana needs to go up there because she needs some of the mountain air, breathing in that fresh air. So we're going to take a couple of days and just slip up there real quick, give her a little break from the treatments that she's going through, and then she has to go right back to the treatments uh, starting on Monday. So God bless you. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of this work. Shalom.